Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TCD Talk, back today with another video. In today's video, we're going to talk about it finally. Jeremiah has officially hit Living Legend in the Flesh and Blood TCG Classic Instructed format, and we are now looking at, yet again, another new meta, but also a meta that's not going to last very long, so we're going to talk about it. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hopefully you enjoy your stay. If you're a long-standing supporter, thank you so much as always. Feel free to check out the Discord down below as well as access to our channel membership. Uh, it's going to be a really good time, really good ways to support the channel, both free and uh, monetary ways. So definitely check that out. But we'll get right into it. The other thing I want to say is I'm definitely going to be start trying to really kick into gear. I know I've said it a couple times, but I've been really doing a lot of content playing the last like three days. And I really want to start flipping my videos between Alpha Clash and Flesh and Blood really trying to grow both games um and i enjoy both games a lot so i'm gonna be doing that so please if you do play alpha clash or maybe you don't but you want to learn different things about it other than what i've already put out please let me know in the comments down below i'd love to hear that so we'll get right into it jeremiah has officially hit living legend i don't think they have living legend on oh they do okay so yeah jeremiah officially hit living legend she had 448 points uh total hitting 1096 so she is now officially living legend and before we talk about the meta i just want to say i'm really glad about the weekly checks uh for living legend now i know some people it was like a little divisive on if people liked it or didn't but if they would have let jeremiah if they didn't do the weekly checks they did like at the end of every season which would have been the end of the pro quest season jeremiah would have ended up having like <coughs> probably 12 1300 points and it just would have been so much of a waste for other heroes to be able to shine so I'm really glad they do the weekly checks. But with Jeremiah hitting Living Legend, we're going to talk about who gets better or worse. I did a video a while back a little bit on that, but I've had some different changes and thoughts recently. But right now, as you can see, a couple other heroes have been doing really well. Azilius had 235 points since Heavy Hitters came out, uh, winning the um, winning the uh, Battle Hardens with Brody and a couple other stuff. Uh, Brody also won the Colin Fouquet, I believe. So um, definitely some a lot of stuff has came down for Azalea and she's doing really well and I do expect her to improve slightly we'll talk about that but she's doing really well almost at 500 living legend points almost has caught Viscerai in them which is really funny poor Viscerai Viscerai is just gonna like stay at 500 until the next rune blade set I think this hero is gonna be here a while um but Azalea doing very very well KO obviously continuing to do well as well as Kasai both of them now KO Kasai and Victor are ahead of what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten other heroes in the game they're already like in the 12 through 14 or 11 through 13 slot prism as well doing very good at 110 all these heroes are going to continue to rise i think and potentially pass like this group in front of them which is kind of crazy to think about so overall um the metagame is going to shift a lot a uh, last thing i want to say is Phi is really interesting until Phi gets more support or we get away from this like heavy armor meta i don't think Phi is going to go anywhere so if you're a Phi player yes Phi is very close but i think i think you're gonna be fine unless he gets some crazy stuff and then that is ninja only ninja in this fail which i don't think Phi is going to get personally um i think a lot of it's gonna be combo oriented i think Phi is gonna be staying there for a bit but yeah so what does this do for the you know who gets better who gets worse and I, like i said i did this video a while back um, i just brought my old good old tier list here um but i've had a couple changes on just what i've thought about and why so the biggest class that does get better obviously is assassin um assassin's the biggest one i'm not gonna go through all these but the one thing i wanted to say is that's gonna be interesting to see is the meta is gonna change pro quest week two obviously jeremiah's can't play jeremiah but I do think that some heroes are going to be like significantly better week one or week two, I guess the first week that Jeremiah is gone. And then they're slowly going to go down, slowly going to go down because people are going to naturally tech for different things. I think week one, like the first week of Jeremiah being gone, I think Prism is going to skyrocket. I think people are going to keep poppers in their list because they know Prism exists, but a single popper does not beat Prism uh, unless it's a seven power popper. <laughs> and even that doesn't be prism but people are going to think that they can just like do the same thing or they can run time snap potion and just win because they get out of the als loop and yes those things do help but it doesn't quite win you the game against prism prism is a highly skill intensive deck i do think some people will switch to her and it may you know not do as well as as they think it will because it does take a lot of practice but i do think prism is going to be the biggest riser of anyone especially week two and week three 
until the the meta kind of shifts into who you want to tech into because before it was okay you have to have a game plan for Dromine. you pretty much have to have a game plan for ko if there is no game plan you at least know how to play into it maybe you haven't teched because ko's ko and some decks you only can tech with so much ko is going to do his thing regardless um but some people are going to i think still tech into prism and i think a lot of people are going to be teching into hatchet story and kasai uh, specifically because those get a lot better. And then the final decks I think people will, will tech into are Victor slash Guardian and KO. Um, most interesting thing to me is that most of the time in lieu of not knowing what to tech into, what it, what do you, I mean, you could think of, I'll give you like five seconds. What do you think most flesh and blood players are going to put in their sideboards when they don't know what else to put? The answer is either poppers or defense reactions, right? So although Assassin does get significantly better because Jeremiah is leading the format, a deck, a, 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 how do I put this? A format with a lot of defense reactions, the, it doesn't make Assassin obsolete by any means. There's ways to play around it, but it does make it harder. You can't just casually flip with Uziri all the time and play off two card hands. Even the Victor list that did well at the calling is now running like unmovables and that all you got and sinks and fates and sigils. So Assassin gets a lot even worse than the, in the Victor if people were running the new Victor list. So it's going to be really interesting to see some heroes are affected more than others. I do think Azalea also is a hero that's going to do very well week two and then slowly go down. Not like drop off the face of the planet, but people are going to start teching for taller things rather than wider things. So people are going to be running immovables, reinforce the lines, Oasis or Spite, things that can really get around Azalea's dominate. And it's not going to nullify her because the good thing about Azalea is that she can run so many arsenal disruption effects like seek and destroy and release attention which will eventually arsenal and disrupt when paired with a seek and destroy uh to prevent you from using your d-react and arsenal uh lace with inertia things like that and what that does is it keeps you from it makes it harder to arsenal d-reacts because when she does that it just creates this pressure where you can't utilize your d-reacts effectively when she's dominating because you want to get something in arsenal so you can get around the dominate but if she's constantly hitting you with Lace of Nurse and Seek and Destroys and forcing you to basically not have an arsenal, whether it hits or not, it can be very, very difficult. So um, I think Azalea, though, will Azalea and Prism the most will get significantly better. But then I think Azalea will eventually fall to just improve slightly because Azalea still is going to struggle into uh, the victors of the meta. Azalea does not do well in the Prism, even with Merkmire, Grapnel and other stuff like triple buffing and then they just play arc light sentinel like it just sucks um so it'll be interesting to see how azalea is teching to that i do think that prism's the probably the biggest winner here followed by assassins i also think i had to sigh in the significantly improves but i think she yes her best matchup is gone but because hatchet dory has gotten so much better i think she just goes into the improved slightly category just because these two decks like hatchet dory was already better built to beat Jeremiah and I think is better built in this meta. So I don't think Kasai's stock improves a whole lot. Um, I actually would probably put her like around around here. Um, the other heroes that get a lot better are Riptide, uh, Max, and Teclavosin. I think specifically Riptide and Teclavosin are two very big sleeper heroes. Are they going to be, am I saying they're going to be meta staple heroes? No, but I do think these heroes can steal more wins with Jeremiah gone. Riptide actually does pretty decent in the Prism. It's slightly unfavored, but your traps can just trigger and kill her uh, angels and they prevent on hit effects like Tarbot Trap prevents on hit effects for Herald Air Edition and stuff like that. So really, really cool there. Teclavosin actually has a better match on the Prism than most people think from what I'm hearing. And like, his ability to stall until singularity is just really, really good. Jeremiah was his biggest issue with that. If you actually go look at Tech of Austin's matchup spread, he doesn't have a whole lot of other like terrible matchups. Um, so I think Tech of Austin actually could be one of the biggest winners. And then Max also. Max is a sleeper pick, I think. It's not just a meme pick. It, like the uh, LSS article said, it's not just Copium. I do think that the, the hero is in a really good spot. When it comes to the improved slightly, nothing too much to say about this. Like I said, I think Azalea is going to, her stock's going to go way up week two, and then it's going to go slightly down for week three and four, just because I think people are going to start teching for that tall damage, which is going to make her ability to dominate consistently a little bit harder. Um, like I said, I don't think Kasai goes up a whole lot because I think most people are on Hatchadori. I'm not saying Hatchadori is leagues better than Kasai. I do think it's a little bit more consistent, which in this meta, you're going to want that. That third swing is very, very viable. Um, Bolton definitely goes up a little bit. Yes, Jeremiah wasn't terrible, but I think Bolton, but Bolton just goes up in general, in my opinion. 
Um, Olympia is going to be better with that specialization. It's come out in this field, even though he has to wait a little bit. And then finally, I think Reinhardt goes up a little bit just because I think the meta is going to go to more tankier. Uh, a lot of defense reactions, a lot of armor, and Reinhardt is a good way to get around that. So I think because Katsu and Fire are the two decks that get the worst uh, because of Jeremiah leaving, like worse notionally, Katsu is still a really good deck. Uh, Reinhardt might not run into like hard aggro as much and he'll be able to get around uh, those heavy block decks none of these decks really change in my opinion they all kind of stay the same um, yeah none of them really go nutty I think Vincent technically gets better if there's a lot of Prism but there would have to Prism would have to be like the most played deck of the format for Vincent to be meta relevant in my opinion and I don't think Prism's going to get that much representation the, the deck's just too too like good um, I put Kano in no change, even though Kano hates Prism, because again, I'd, as good as Prism is, it's not quite Levia level of, of like small player base, but I don't think it's going to be like the most played deck in, a, in an event. I just don't think it will be. I think it's too hard of a deck. And it's also an expensive deck to buy. Um, so I don't think people are just going to pivot to this, at least in the early goings. If Prism ends up being like the most represented deck at like a battle hard level and above, then yes, Kano gets far worse and pretty much becomes almost unplayable. Um, but until then, Kano's a no change. And yeah, the last one is the gets worse category. The ninjas get worse. Katsu's still a very good deck. I think Katsu's still like, you know, a top deck in the format, like high A tier. Like if this was S, A, B, C, I think he'd be like right here. Um, but regardless, he does get worse. His best match, one of his best matchups goes away. And Jeremiah Fi definitely gets a lot worse. Jeremiah was already kind of 50 50 for Fi with Toma Imperial Flame. But now with all the armor, like. I hate saying this because I, it used to be said the other way. People used to say, why play Katsu when you can play Fi? And now it's the other way around. Why play Fi when you can play Katsu? Just straight up honest. So overall, I'm, I'm really excited about this meta, but this meta is very short, right? We're only going to have this meta until Misfail drops. And then these three heroes are going to come into the fold and it's going to completely change, hopefully. It'll be really fun. Um, so it's a very small, condensed meta that's only going to last about, at this point, six weeks. And we're gonna get a little bit brand new of a meta. But yeah, week two, the like, if you, if I re, if I uh, put these up here, I think the biggest winner jumps are gonna be like, I think you'll see a good amount of Uziris win, like not a lot, but compared to like the one or two wins that we've been seeing, I think Dorinthia is gonna get a lot more wins. Obviously, um, Azalea will get a lot more wins, and I think Victor will jump. Like these will be like the top four winners will probably be these four and then these will just get a lot more wins in general uh but that's kind of where i see things so far but let me know what your thoughts in the comments down below we have a couple of heroes that are getting close i think we have like something like 300 some events we have like basically like eight to nine hundred pro points or living legend points left and i don't think any other hero is going to live in legend before miss fail i do think katsu could get somewhat close like when i say close like 700 it'd be kind of cool i think dorinthia will go up a lot more i think she'll be at like 600 by the end of the season which would be really cool to see um azalea same i think azalea will be at like 600 by the end of the season so we also have a couple battle hardens sprinkled in between now and then i think there's three battle hardens between now and the end of pro quest season uh san francisco this weekend valencia i think and then richmond so we have what 120 points there uh, or 80 to 120 depending on the format um, so really excited to see that as well. But let me know what your thoughts in the comments down below. What hero do you think gets best? I do think a lot of heroes get better. Uh, the format's even more open now, but the format's also, I think, going to tank up a lot. I think there's going to be a lot of defense reactions, a lot of armor, and if you're not playing a deck that can get around that or work through that, you're going to struggle a little bit. So uh, let me know what your thoughts are. If you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, or subscribe. If you're um, if you don't, it's totally fine. Go to another Flesh and Bug creator, leave a like, comment, subscribe on their stuff so we can get more people seeing this game. And I'll see y'all next time on TC Talk. Thank y'all so much.